So in this lesson we're going to talk about rocket stability. What are those things that can cause a rocket to uh, to fly strange or in unexpected ways and we'll talk about how to fix those things. And once again thanks to Tom Saradet for putting together these lessons. So rocket stability, when we talk about rocket stability we're really talking about uh, a rocket that doesn't fly straight up or maybe it wobbles. Um, there are all kinds of things that can cause it to to fly in unexpected ways. Uh, there are even um, configurations where things become completely unstable, which is really kind of a dangerous situation. So let's talk a little bit about some of those things. First, let's talk about two different kinds of motion. And I won't talk a whole lot about this, but uh, there's translation and rotation and you can think of it in this way translation is moving in a straight line in any given direction so for example we would like our rocket to fly straight up that would be translation if it spins around its long axis that's a rotation so translation is straight line uh, rotation is spinning uh, a lot of equations here, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but talk about how a rocket can translate. And it can go, uh, it doesn't always have to go straight up, it can go to the side, and that can be caused typically by wind. Maybe you have uh, some fin irregularities, but that's how a rocket, what causes a rocket to translate or move from side to side. And when we talk about rotation, we have to talk about uh, three axes. And because a, a rocket is a three-dimensional object, it has an X, Y, and Z coordinate system. And the, the thing that you're going to see probably most often is a roll. So you see here the roll axis is pointing from the, uh, from the engine and it goes all the way up. So a roll basically just means it's spinning. It's kind of hard to tell from these uh, from these arrows, but a roll is essentially spinning around its long axis. For a rocket, yaw and pitch can be kind of the same thing. You can think about it as the same thing. If it's going to the side, for example, it's like an airplane, uh, a pitch would mean you have the nose up and the tail down. A yaw would mean that it's rotating, the, the nose is rotating left or right uh, compared to its direction of flight. The same can be said for uh, a rocket. And when it rolls, it's going to uh, roll about its center of gravity, or that that line that uh, goes through the from the from the engine to the tip. Uh, the center of gravity is going to lie along that line, and all that motion goes right through the center of gravity. Yaw and pitch for a rocket depending on where you're standing and depending on how you define your axes they're essentially the same thing but for for our purposes you can think of yaw and pitch as any rotation that's not spinning uh, spinning along the uh, the roll axis very important concept to understand is the center of gravity so the center of gravity is where uh, a rocket balances or actually where any physical component would balance and here you see the symbol for the center of gravity uh, it's also called CG and it's just a circle and it has uh, it's broken up into quadrants and it has a couple of black quadrants and a couple of yellow quadrants and here's the typical location uh, that, that we would like to see for a stable rocket uh, you can see that the center of gravity is not in the middle but it's somewhere towards the back and the reason it is is because the the engine and the motor uh, is in the back uh, that has a lot of weight the fins are in the back and and that has a lot of weight as well uh, it might move depending on where you have the the payload we're going to have some eggs so that's going to uh, that payload is going to move our CG forward a little bit but one way to find where the CG is is actually very simple once you have your rocket fully assembled 
and you want to have your payload in there as well. Um, you don't have to tie a string. You can certainly do that. That's one of the most popular ways. You can balance it on uh, a pencil or your finger. And where when it balances there, that's where your center of gravity is. So the center of pressure is if you could have one point on the rocket where all of the the aerodynamic forces are concentrated that's essentially the center of pressure and one of the biggest components or the biggest influencers of the center of pressure uh, are the fins uh, so the shape of the fins and where the fins are located the size of the fins all have a big effect on the center of pressure and you see that symbol kind of looks like a target it's just a circle with a dot in it so let's talk a little bit about stable rockets for a stable rocket uh, and you can see here the center of gravity whoops center of gravity is forward or more towards the the nose cone center of gravity is farther this way than the center of pressure so we say it's ahead of the center of pressure so you see the center of pressure back here and it's behind the center of gravity uh, and what that does is if there is an aerodynamic force it's going to naturally uh, make the rocket tend to fly uh, straight up we'll talk about unstable here in a second there's another condition called neutral stability. Neutral stability is where the center of pressure and the center of gravity are essentially in the same place. Now you might say, well, that's pretty beneficial. And actually for, for a rocket, it's not beneficial. Um, you don't know if it will fly stable uh, or unstable. Uh, unstable is a very undesirable uh, undesirable thing. So we don't want neutral stability. And again, that's where the CG and the CP are very, very close. And finally, in an unstable rocket, the center of pressure is ahead of the center of gravity. And you can see here, and it looks like kind of a crazy design. Uh, it has the fins more towards the middle, uh, and that does move the center of pressure. If you have a rocket built like this, I can almost guarantee you it's going to fly sideways uh, and even maybe uh, fly upside down and back into the ground. So there are some ways to correct unstable flight. Uh, and even if it's not, uh, even if it's stable, uh, there are ways to make it more stable. And so here are a couple of things, a couple of uh, tips to move the center of gravity. Um, you can change the uh, the you can add some weight uh, or even take out weight from the nose cone or move the payload a little bit you can also change the the length of the tubes or the airframe probably the best thing to do is play around with the weight and the nose cone that's going to have uh, the greatest impact on your center of gravity if you want to change the center of pressure I mentioned already by far the biggest uh, effect is the the fins so you can change the size you can change the shape and the location uh, those are going to have by far the biggest impact um, you can also change the the length of the the tube or the diameter that's not going to have as much of an impact but it will have some There's a thing called one caliber stability, um, and that's pretty desirable. Uh, the way you calculate one caliber stability, uh, or the way you achieve one caliber stability, is to have the, the distance between the center of gravity and the center of pressure. You want this distance to be equal to the diameter of the, the tube or the rocket. So in your design, you might want to start with trying to calculate or trying to come up with your design to achieve that. Weathercocking is a phenomenon that um, 
we see quite often, especially in early flights, and it's really caused by the wind. And it's a little bit counterintuitive because you would think that the wind would tend to uh, blow your, your rocket um, in the direction of the wind. But here you see up on the top uh, in this diagram, the wind is blowing from the right to the left. And what happens is, here we have our, our CG uh, ahead of our center of pressure. So the center of pressure is where all the aerodynamic forces are going to go. So it's going to create a force that way and it's going to tilt the rocket. So what's going to happen is the rocket's actually going to fly into the wind. So we want to get rid of that as much as we can. And here's kind of what that looks like. And the effect is you're going to actually lose some altitude. So we want to have um, a, C, a CP and a CG configured such that we don't have so much weather cocking. We want to fly as straight up as possible so we don't lose altitude. Or we have a design that takes uh, wind velocity into account. So we talked already a little bit about uh, causes of weather cocking. So large fins, uh, wind can have a big effect on it, and the the position of the center of gravity with respect to the center of pressure. Um, if it's too far in front, you're going to get uh, a lot of weather cocking. So you don't want uh, you don't want something that's too far apart. Aim for that one diameter. Uh, distance between the center of gravity and the center of pressure. One way to get rid of it, and I don't recommend this at all, is to put tube fins on there. Uh, tube fins will reduce leather, I'm sorry, weather cocking, uh, but we don't really want to do that because it can, can become unstable. And that concludes the stability presentation.